So we talked a lot about heart pathologies, but your heart's only one half of the cardiovascular system, right? You have another half. The vessels. So let's talk about some vessel pathologies. So a big group, it's gonna be vasculitises. Vasculitides? I don't know the plural for vasculitis, but we're gonna talk about vasculitis. This is inflammation of your blood vessels. And you like to break it into whether it affects your large blood vessels, which are your aortas and its branches like your carotid, uh, medium-sized vessels like your renal artery, and then small little vessels. We'll start with the large one first. Large vessels. There's only two of them. The first one is giant cell arteritis, aka temporal arteritis. Judging by the name, causes, you see giant cells, aka uh, macrophages, granulomas, stuff like that, and they can affect your temporal arter artery. In fact, it can affect other branches of your external carotids, like your, your maxillary artery. All right, so it can affect the outside part of your face. Your, you have a very tender temple from your temporary, temporal artery involvement. You have, a, you have jaw pain from your maxillary artery. So all right, tender temple, jaw pain, but it can also affect branches of your internal carotids, like your ophthalmic artery. You get vision changes, vision changes. Okay, these are the signs, the symptoms. And sure enough, if you do a biopsy, you're gonna see granulomas. Now, it often affects elderly females. Elderly females. And so if an elderly lady comes in, she has pain on the side of her temple, she has jaw pain, she says she her vision is kind of wonky been for the last few days, you're thinking of giant cell, okay? And because it's an inflammation, ESR, you have increased ESR on labs. Now what do you do about it? What do you do about it? Well, you can confirm it with a biopsy to look for that granuloma, all those granulomas, but that takes some time. If you see this, you immediately give steroids. You do not wait for the biopsy because it can cause vision loss, permanent vision loss, it can cause blindness. So you don't wait. That's a very, very important fact that I'd like to tell you. If you see someone and have a clinical suspicion, an old lady, vision changes, tender temple, jaw pain, give them steroids right away. All right, don't wait. One last thing that they want you to know, giant cells often associated with polymyalgia, Rheumatica, which might show you nothing but again, the increased inflammation, ESR. All right, that's the stiff shoulder, stiff hips. So let's try and make it into a step-like question. Synthesize all this information to a step-like question. Elderly lady comes in, tender temple, jaw pain, trouble seeing, how do you treat it? Steroids, or do you wait for the biopsy? No. Or what else do you look for? Maybe stiff shoulders from the polymyalgia rheumatica. All right. Or what lab findings you see? Increased ESR. So if you jumble all the variables and you're comfortable with all the variables, very easy to get questions on this right. Second one, Takayasu. This is again, uh, inflammation of your aorta. Okay, and it can cause fibrosis, and when it causes fibrosis, that kind of makes it difficult for the blood to travel, and you get low, weak blood pressure and pulses in your arms. Weak pulses. Sometimes this disease is called pulseless disease. Pulseless disease. And it'll be very similar to giant cell. You can see the inflammation with increased ESR treated with steroids. Treated with steroids. The epidemiology is a little bit different. Takayasu, Takayasu, as you can imagine, was first seen in the Japanese population and clinically is more commonly seen in young Asian females. Right. That is large vessel. Let's move on to medium sized vessels. Medium. First one polyarteritis nodosa. They love to test the fact that it's associated with hepatitis B. And it may be that your body mounts an immune response to hepatitis B, causes immune reaction, causes immune complex deposition that causes this inflammation of your vessels. So, all right, immune complex 
right? And it can deposit in your vessels and cause inflammation. It can cause necrosis. When we call necrosis due to protein deposition, we call that fibrinoid necrosis. Fibrinoid necrosis. And it can affect your renal artery and damage the wall. Damage the wall and it can cause low aneurysms. You know, when you have a damaged wall, you can have a little outpouching. Damage the wall and cause little aneurysms. Little aneurysms. And some parts of the walls respond to the inflammation with spasms. So some parts of the wall spasm and get smaller. And if you look at these vessels with an arteriogram, it looks kind of like beads, kind of like nodes. That's why I call it nodosa. Right? Now our second one is Kawasaki's. Kawasaki's. Judging by the name, it was first found in the Japanese population and it's seen more in Asian kids. Asian kids. And it causes inflammation, causes a rash, especially in the palm and the feet. Causes lymphadenopathy. It can cause mucositis and uh, red tongue. So red tongue. And lastly, it can cause fever. Any kid with a fever that lasts more than five days, you're thinking Kawasaki's. You're thinking Kawasaki's, and that goes beyond step one. In step two, they, they'll ask the same question. All right, fever, kids get fevers all the time. Kids are like basically sick 90% of the time. But if a fever lasts longer than five days, you start to get concerned it might be something else. You, get to, you start to get concerned it might be Kawasaki's. And you treat it very, very aggressively. Aggressively, you give them IV, IG, and you give them aspirin. We usually don't give kids aspirin, right? It can cause Rye syndrome. It can cause liver failure. We don't give kids aspirin. So why do we give it here? Because it can affect, affect the kid's coronary artery. The artery that supplies your heart. It can damage these arteries, damage these arteries, cause aneurysms, cause thrombosis, cause a myocardial infarction. You can have a six-year-old with a myocardial infarction. So you can see why we treat it so aggressively. They want you to know this. They want you to know that it can lead to an MI. There's not a lot of things that leads to a MI in children, right? So no Kawasaki's, right? No Kawasaki's, no kind of the general symptoms, right? It shouldn't be too hard to pick up. Long fever, this weird kind of rash, uh, big red tongue in a little kid, not normal, Kawasaki's. Last one. Buega's disease, also known as thrombo and obliterans. Seen in smokers, and smoke damages your vessels, damages your vessels, and it can cause claudication, basically uh, pain when you use them, pain when you use them. It's kind of like angina of the, of the heart. We have claudication of the periphery. So if you have damaged vessels in your legs and you run a lot, you start to get pain when you run. Or you have damaged vessels of your hands and you use them a lot, you might get pain. So kind of like angina of the peripheries. Well, eventually that will progress to thrombosis, blood clots. And if you don't get enough blood to your vessels, they start to die. They start to go, have ne they start to have necrosis, gangrene. They start to auto amputate turn black and fall off. That's why I call it thromboangiitis obliterans, right? You get thrombuses in your vessels and cause them to obliterate, all right? Obliterate your tissue. Thromboangiitis obliterans. What do you do? What do you tell them to do? Stop smoking, that's a big problem, stop smoking. That's your large vessel vasculitis, medium vessel vasculitis. Let's talk about your small vessel vasculitis. This is one that students struggle with. There are a lot of little minute details, but we're gonna break it down by the name, which the name gives away a lot of information. Also, um, by trying to synthesize all the information to a step like question. It kinda, that kinda reinforces the information. There's not a lot that you need to know, just a few key facts for each of them, all right? The first one is gonna be granulomatosis, Polyangiitis. All right. Judging from the name, it's an inflammation of multiple blood vessels that causes granulomas. 
And that's exactly what it does. It affects many different blood vessels. It can affect your upper respiratory tract vessels in your nasal pharynx, cause things like sinusitis, inflammation of your sinuses. It can affect your lungs, the vessels in your lungs, cause cough, hemoptysis. It can affect the vessels in your kidneys, cause glomerular nephritis and hematuria. So it affects many different vessels, and if you biopsy it, what you're gonna see, you're gonna see granulomas. Granulomas. A key fact they want you to know is that it's likely autoimmune, and there's an autoimmune laboratory finding that is associated with this, and that is C. Anca. What the heck is C. Anca? You have two different types of Anca. You have C. Anca and you have P. Anca. Let's talk about C. Anca first. C. Anca stands for cytoplasmic. Cytoplasmic anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies. That's quite a mouthful that seems like they're talking in circles. What, what does it actually mean? Well, it means you're making antibodies against the cytoplasm of your neutrophils. You're attacking your own neutrophils. And when you look at it in imaging, you're going to see antibodies that are going to be all around your cytoplasm. They're going to be diffuse, right? All around the neutrophil cytoplasm. At attacking your own neutrophil's cytoplasm. Attacking your own neutrophil's cytoplasm. The most common target is going to be proteinase 3 or PR3. Sometimes C. Anca is also called PR3. Three Anka. PR3 Anka. So that's the Anka. What the heck is P Anka? Well, the P stands for perinuclear, near the nucleus. All right. Perinuclear anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies. You're making antibodies against the nucleus of your own neutrophils. You're making antibodies against the nucleus of your own neutrophils. So if you look at it on imaging, you're gonna see something that looks like that. All right, antibodies against your own neutrophils. Sometimes it looks like that, okay? So it's less diffuse, it just circles the nucleus, just circles the nucleus. And the main target is this protein called myeloperoxidase or MPO. Sometimes Pianca is known as MPO Anka. Okay. I've seen questions where I'll show a picture of this and say, what is that? Pianca. Or they might say, what's the most common protein attacks? Myeloproxidase. Or they'll show a picture of this. What is this? Cianca. What's the most common target? Proteinase 3. Proteinase 3. So that's your two Ancas, your C Anca and your P Anca. Let's jump back into our talk on vasculitis. So we had a granulomatosis, polyangitis. We said that it causes inflammation of multiple vessels. It's the polyangitis part, causes granulomas, and also is associated with C Anca, also known as PR3 Anca, right? PR3 Anca. All right. We're done with that one. Let's talk about the next one, microscopic polyangitis. Again, inflammation of multiple vessels, but we dropped the, eh, the granuloma from the name. We don't have any more granulomas, and that's exactly what you see, no granulomas. It also doesn't affect the nasopharynx. And if that wasn't enough to differentiate the two, it is not C Anca positive, it is P Anca positive, also known as MPO. Anka, positive. All right. Third one on the list, eosinophilic granulomatosis with <laughs> polyangiitis. Holy moly, what does this mean? Well, inflammation of multiple vessels with granulomas and eosinophils, and eosinophils. What do you think you're gonna see? You're gonna see granulomas 
you're going to see eosinophils. On blood, you're going to see eosinophilia and increased IgE because those two kind of go together like a horse and carriage. And this is also P oncopositive. So the last two are P oncopositive. The first one is C oncopositive. And I think that's all the ones that are onca, anything. So if you know these three, I think you're in good shape, all right? Again, the name really gives it away. I've seen a question that was talking about someone with all these different symptoms and signs and all this stuff in the lab had like eosinophils and IgE. And I was like, wait, 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 what? Why are they even talking about it? And then I looked at the answer choice and I saw a name that said eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. I was like, that's got to be the answer, right? Just by the name alone. All right, so just by the name alone, you can get a lot of the answers right. As long as you don't just memorize the name, actually understand why they call it what they call it. So those are your common three small vessels vasculitis that can confuse a lot of students. And there's one last one, and we'll be all done, and that's Henoch Schoenlein Purpura. Purpura. Seen in kids after an upper, upper respiratory infection. And the immunoglobulin that's found in your upper respiratory tract and any mucosal tract is going to be IgA. IgA. Your IgA will attack whatever's causing this, but your IgA can also deposit uh, as immune complexes, and that can damage our body. It can deposit in your stomach and cause abdominal pain. It can deposit in your skin and cause palpable purpura. That's what gives it the purpura name. Deposits in your joints cause arthralgia, joint pain. Deposit in your kidneys. What do you think that will cause? IgA nephropathy. It is IgA mediated, right? Purpura is by far the biggest sign. That's why they put it in the name. That's why I put it in the name. So that does it for the topic of vasculitis. Again, know a few key facts for each of them. Know why they named it what they named it. And then lastly, if you have trouble remembering these, these facts, synthesize them all into a step-like question, ask it to yourself, and then that will make it easier to recognize on, on the actual test. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it clarifies some things. Thanks.